a fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty, hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, outlaws roamed the territory. Usually working in small bands, they attacked isolated ranch houses, driving off cattle and stealing whatever they could lay their hands on. But occasionally, an outlaw with a gift of leadership became ambitious. He welcomed new recruits until his band had grown into a small army, and he was able to defy not only the local sheriffs, but the government troops as well. The Hawk was such a man, and the story of his meeting with the masked rider of the plains is one of the most exciting episodes in the history of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading south for the border. The horse has been seen near Dover. Hail, Silver! Away! <laughs> Our story begins in the little town of Preston where the army post was located. Matt Badger, an engineer on the newly built railroad, is enjoying an evening at home and... Oh, it sure seems good having you at home at least one day a week, Matt. Sometimes I get so lonesome I wish you wasn't working for the railroad, even if it does pay so good. <laughs> Bess, you ain't no more glad to see me here than I am to be here. But it, it ain't just being lonesome. If you was railroading back east where things were all safe and settled, I'd, I'd likely not mind so much. But here, with engines and hold-up men, I'm thinking of you in the cab of your engine, in the mountains with a canyon beside you, and, and you likely to run off the tracks. Oh, Matt, I can't sleep half the time for thinking of it. No, honey, it ain't near as bad as you make out. And our boy, talking of railroading all the time, saying he's going to be an engineer as soon as the company will take him on. <laughs> He'll have to be a fireman first. That ain't no safer. And speaking of day over, where is he tonight? Oh, land sakes. I never even thought to ask where he was going when he went out. Hey, folks. I just heard some news. Big news. Dale, where have you been? Just down watching the train pulling from Dover. Your pa's been asking for you. <laughs> Wait till I tell you what I heard. <laughs> Reckon it ain't anything to make use of water bread. It ain't. Well, just listen to this. The hawk's on this side of the border. The hawk? Him and all his men. They say there must be two or three hundred of them. The worst coming all the west. They, they ain't coming this way, are they? Now, don't you worry, Ma. They wouldn't do that with all the soldiers there is at the fort. Not them fellas. Nope. The word is they were seen heading for Dover. Good Lord. Oh, the poor folks up there. But what did the hawk cross the border for? He had a fight with the soldiers on the other side and lost. He came to this side to get away from them. Somebody ought to get that fellow and string him up by the neck. He calls himself a general, don't he? Yeah, uh, he hires every border cutthroat and breed there is and calls it an army. But that don't keep him from being just a bunch of murdering outlaws. Just like calling himself a general don't keep him from being nothing but a low-down thief and killer. Now you should see the stir down to the fort when the news came in. Is the major going after now, him? You bet he is. He's got to. If the Hawk raids Dover, he'll wipe out the folks up there. They won't have a chance. But, son. Hey, hey. Oh, 
Oh, dear, now what is it? Come in. Oh, howdy, Herb. Matt, grab your coat and hat. Hmm? You and me are taking a train to Dover. I got steam up at the engines just waiting to pull out. But this is Matt's day off. Don't make no difference, ma'am. These are army orders. We're hauling soldiers into the mountains so as they can get after the hawk. You better hurry, Matt. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, can I go with you? I should say you can. But look here, maybe I can help you. I can handle an engine just as well as you can. Well, don't be pestering me. Bess, where's my hat? Here you are, Matt. Hey, will we have to wait for the soldiers, Herb? They're loading now. Close to 500 of them. Golly, that's going to make a mighty hard pull up that mountain grade. It has to be done, Matt. You ready? Uh-huh. Goodbye, honey. We'd like to be back by tomorrow night. Oh, Matt, do take care of yourself. Bye, Pa. we better run, Matt. Yeah, come on. The Major says we got to be in Dover by morning. That'll be it, sure. You got steam up, you say? Steam up and everything's set. All you'll have to do, Matt, is open up the throttle. Gosh, you wasn't far wrong when you said there was going to be 500 soldiers going. The Major's taking near every man he has in the fort. If they get the hawk, it's a good thing. There's the Major now. Hey, Major, here's Matt. You ready to start? Get in your cab, men. We'll be ready in 30 seconds. I'll give the order to pull out. Climb in, Matt. Here, I'll give you a hand. This is going to be a ride to remember. Captain Beverly, tell those men to get in their car. Sergeant, see to those arms. You watching for the signal to highball? Uh-huh. But the Major sounds like he means business. And when he sounds like that, the hawk had better watch out. Yeah. Matt, get going. Here we go. All set, Major. We're ready. It's over in a hurry. We'll do that same. Herb, you keep the steam up. I'll give you enough pressure to blow out the boiler. We're on our way. You just bet we are. Howdy, friend. What in blazes? Matt, they just swung aboard. Look here, Master, you can't... we got both of you covered. Keep this train rolling, do what we tell you, or stop left. It was scarcely 15 minutes after the train had left town that young Lieutenant Rooney, in command at the fort, in the Major's absence, was startled by the sound of loud voices outside his office. You can't tell me! What in blazes? Matt, don't try to stop me. Put down those guns. Not until you take me to Major Wilson. Major Wilson isn't here. Now get out before Not here? Then where is he? You're one of the Hawks men. Quick, Lieutenant. Where's the Major? I'll tell you where he's gone. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. He's gone to wipe out your rotten bunch. Head over. By train. By heavens, when he gets there, your friends will pay for their murders. I'm not from the Hawks. Don't tell me that. I came here to warn Major Wilson of the Hawks trap. You're planning I've something. been following this talk ever since he crossed the border, trying to learn his plans. The lieutenant, he has no more idea of attacking Dover than you have. That's a lie. We have information from... the Hawks supplied for his own reasons. It's a trick, Lieutenant. The Hawks sent only enough men toward Dover to frighten the people and make them think he was approaching with his full force. Then what are you doing? Right now, he's coming here by way of Eagle Pass with more than 200 men. I don't believe... Listen it. to me. What reason would he have for attacking Dover? What he wants is arms and ammunition. With those, he can recross the border and fight the soldiers there on even terms. But it seems impossible. He's clever. He knows he's not safe on this side of the border. He plans just one daring raid and then escape. But if that's true... It is true. What's more, the Hawk has sent two men here ahead of him. They probably came to look over the ground to see if their trick worked. Where are those men? We lost the trail once, but Tonto picked it up again just outside of town. He went into town to look for them while I came here. Tonto? An Indian, my friend. Then we'll pick up those men. If you've told the truth, the Major will have to be warned and brought back here. You say the Hawk is at Eagle Pass now? He is. Thank heavens there's still time for the soldiers to return. Orderly. Yes, sir. We'll have to get the soldiers. bad news. What are you Tell doing? Tell us get way. The two men you followed? Uh, me get there too late. Them on train. What's that? You saw them get on? Me not see them. Other fellas see them. Them get an engine. Major Wilson and the soldiers on that train with two of Hawk's men in the engine? But what can be done? If we knew their plans. Tell us. Huh? That train has to climb a steep grade to get to Dover. That's right. The train won't be able to travel at full speed. Scout could get you to Dover almost as soon as the train. Uh. You're going to ride to Dover. Perhaps the two men seen getting in the cab weren't the outlaws we followed. Tonto thinks them outlaws. I'm afraid they are. But if they aren't, if the soldiers arrive at Dover safely, give Major Wilson the message to return. Tonto, do that. It'll be morning in a few hours. Lieutenant. Yes? We don't know why those men boarded the train. There may be a branch line or something of the sort between here and Dover. They might plan on forcing the engine crew to sidetrack the soldiers, figuring to delay them long enough for the hawk to attack and get away. There is a branch line. It goes to Dawson. 
Your men are equipped with heliographs, aren't they? Mirrors to reflect the sun and send signals? Of course. And get one for Tonto. But what's he if going he to do? If he finds the soldiers have been sidetracked, he can tell us. He'll be in the mountains. It'll be easy for him to send the message and for us to receive it. You're right. And we'll know what's happened. And then we can make our plans. Now hurry so that Tonto can get on his way. Through the long hours of the night, the train toiled up the steep ascent to Dover, the tracks winding between a sheer cliff on the one side and the drop of thousands of feet on the other. During all that time, Matt and Herb were conscious of the unwavering guns of the two outlaws who stood over them. There's no use, you fellas pretending. We know you're from the Hawk. But you won't get away with this. <laughs> we're doing well enough. If you sadly when you're well off, you'll pay more attention to your work than the spike in me here. In daylight. Are we getting pretty close to Dover? Maybe more than 10 or 15 miles from here. And just how do you sidewind this figure you're going to get away from the soldiers after we reach town? <laughs> That's just it. The soldiers ain't going there. Huh? What do you mean? Don't get anxious. Passenger cars kept on a spur in Dover, ain't they? They're all it is. That's just fine. They'll be coming in hand. Hmm? You see, our boss sent some of the fellas to make the folks in Dover think all of us was nearby. You mean they ain't? <laughs> if they was, nobody's known about it till too late. To these friends, the Hawks marching on the fort this very minute. No. And we're planning on using them cars in Dover to pick up our parts there and join the Hawk at the fort. By the time we get back, you'll likely have it took over. You little old Keep jump. your big mouth closed. Spike, any better stop the train? I reckon, Luke. This will do as good as any place. Stop the train? What for? Don't ask so many questions. Just stop but it. But I tell and you... And after it stops, then he told you sticks his head out of the window to ask why you tell him nothing's the matter. Oh, get drilled. But you can't stop get Stop this a... train. You better do like he says, Matt. They ain't the kind that'd hesitate much about shooting. But stop on this grade. We'd never be able to get started again. We'll worry about that. You get some other order. You fellas must be local. Don't argue with him anymore, Luke. Drill on him. I'm stopping. Stick your head out of the cab and tell them fellas nothing is wrong. All right. Go ahead. Matt, what have you stopped for? Speak up. Ain't nothing, Major. We, we'll be on our way again in a minute. Very well, but don't delay us. Is he outside the train? No, he, he just shouted from the door back there. Then, uh... <laughs> now climb out of this cab, you fellas. We just got one more thing for you to do. And you'll find that downright easy. <laughs> signal soon. If anything's delayed him. What's that? Light signals. Silver old boy. It's Tonto. Come on, Silver. Hurry, old fellow. Lieutenant. Oh, oh Silver. Silver. Uh, Lieutenant. He did. Lieutenant, the hawk has done something I didn't believe even he was capable of doing. Yes? The train stopped eight miles this side of Dover. There's no branch line at that point. The train stopped and the engine uncoupled from the cars. You mean the train... I mean that at this moment those cars are loose. They're running away down the grade. And when they jump the track, every man inside will be dashed to his death. The curtain falls on the first part of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger received the startling news from Tonto that railroad cars carrying 500 soldiers were hurtling unchecked down the mountain grade, he brought the news to Lieutenant Rooney at the fort. Every man will be killed. Every last man. Listen to me, Lieutenant. But what can How we... many men have you here? Only 15. The Hawk will be arriving in very few hours. Send your men into town. Warn the townspeople. Get every man, woman, and child inside the fort. We'll never be able to hold you out. You can for a while. But what good... I haven't a second to waste explaining. Just do as you're told. Get those people in the fort. At once. Come on, kill me! about the soldiers yet, son? Not a word, Ma. Oh, I'm that worried. I just can't sit still. Oh, now, shucks. There ain't no sense in that. I'd say the safest place to be is right where Paul is with the soldiers. And as for getting word, you know as well as I do, there can't be no word till the train gets back. I suppose I'm foolish. Of course you are. Now, what are you fixing for supper? Well, now, I ain't just decided yet. There's a... A masked man. Wait. Oh, my God. Son, leave it to me. Dale, Dale, what you doing to me? You won't be harmed. Let me go, you crook, you... Up with you. Help, it's a mass man. Come on, Silver. What's this, sir? What's the idea? I'm sorry I had to frighten your mother, Dale. But this is a matter of life and death. But what can I... I told you you could run an engine. But sure I can. But not to help out, Lord. No, to save the lives of 500 men. So what? Here we are. Oh, Silver. Silver. Get down. I this don't... is the only engine here. And you're the only man who can run it. Now get in that cab. In the meantime, obeying the Lone Ranger's instructions, Lieutenant Rooney sent his men to summon the townspeople to the fort. In a frenzy of fear and confusion, thrown into a panic by the dreaded name of the hawk, the townspeople gathered their families, loaded their possessions into carts, wagons, across the saddles of their horses, into and onto anything available, and made their way to the fort. For hours, an unbroken stream of horses and wagons covered the short distance between the fort and town. All was chaos at first inside the fort. Baggage was strewn at random. Untied horses got in everyone's way. Children were lost and frantic mothers searched for them. Men busied themselves at useless, self-appointed tasks. But at length, the discipline of the small body of soldiers prevailed, and a measure of order was finally restored. Get those horses out of the way! Put the children in the barracks! All the men are to stand by for orders, and the women make ready to load the guns! Sergeant! Have ammunition brought from the magazine. Yes, sir. Lieutenant. Well, what is it? Over there. Down the trail. Don't, don't you see anything? I don't. Horsemen. Do you think? It's the hawk and his men. If they were to go past at the time the masked man's head, they're just about due. Oh, they'll kill us. I know they will. But not before they know they've been in a fight, ma'am. Orderly, the hawk is in sight. Men, to the stockade. Make ready for an attack. <laughs> With a head of steam in the boilers and with Dale at the throttle, the engine taken by the Lone Ranger raced from town and up the mountain grade. While he fed fuel to the blazing firebox, the Lone Ranger explained his purpose to the young man. So that's why you made me come along. Yes, Dale. We may lose our lives in the attempt, but it's worth the risk. We can save the lives of 500. I'm glad you made me do it. I thought you'd feel that way when you understood. But I wouldn't have hesitated even if I'd known you wouldn't. There's too much at stake. If only them cars don't jump the, jump the track before we can get to them. Well, we can do nothing about that except hope. Strange, is it? Do you think them crooks killed Paul and her? I don't know, but I do know this. Tano was somewhere nearby, and if there was anything to prevent it, Tano would have taken a hand. You said Tano. Yes. I've heard that name before somewhere. Perhaps you have. But I can't just seem to place it. That doesn't matter now. All that counts is reaching those runaway cars as soon as we can. And with us going toward them and them coming toward us, if we don't see them in time and meet head on, there ain't likely to be enough of us left to know who we was. Mm -hmm. 
The runaway cars, gathering momentum as they rolled down the grade, were soon racing at terrific speed. They roared down straightaways, the iron wheel rims just barely clutching the rails as they whipped around curves, the cars rocking madly from side to side as they threatened to leap the tracks and plunge into the waiting canyon. Inside the cars, the soldiers were at first paralyzed, then shouted their terror. Finally, they became grim and silent. Not a man among them, but was certain that the lightning journey could end only in death. And all the time, engine and cars were rushing toward each other. At the fort, too, the townspeople and the small body of soldiers, though prepared to sell their lives dearly, expected only death at the hands of the hawk. Have all the men armed? Guns and ammunition have been passed around. The men are ready and waiting, sir. Don't fire until I give the word. Yes, sir. Hundreds have been killed. Hundreds. Not many more than 200. Is, is there anything I can do? There is. Have some of the women prepare bandages. Detail others to stand by with ammunition. Our guns must be loaded as fast as they're empty. And ma'am. Yes? The most important thing you can do is keep the women from becoming frightened. Well, they ain't no more scared than the men folks are. I know, but... And I'll see to the bandages and bullets right now. The hawk is getting ready to charge. Men... Make every bullet count! Take aim! Fire! There's the fort, fellas! Don't pay no attention to their shooting! There's more than ten of us to every soldier in there. And the townspeople don't count. Are you ready? Yeah. Then come on. We'll wipe out the whole blasted bunch of them. Get up there. I need every bit you can give me. Right. Yeah. Wonder we haven't got sight of him yet. Keep a lookout. You can see them any minute now. If, if they ain't jumped the track, have a look from your side, will you? Going around this curve, you'll be able to see better than me. There should be a straight stretch here. Sight anything? Wait. Do you see anything? Stop the engines. They're coming. How far are Stop it, I say. If they hit us now... We'll I... never know it. Now back up. Head back toward town. Give me more steam. You'll get it. <laughs> If those cars were uncoupled... I don't savvy either, sir. That man had some plan. But I don't see what he could have done to prevent well, it. Well, we'll soon be knowing. The last whistle was for when the train reached town. And the hawk is getting ready to attack again. Yeah, I'm afraid we won't be able to fight him off much longer. Well, we'll try. <laughs> what are those people shouting about? I don't know, but I can... <laughs> what in blue? Well, I'll be the... The Major, sir, and all of the men. With a masked man leading them. But how in blazes did he do it? That's something I don't know. But watch out, the hawk, he's charging. To your station! Fire at will! Hold off the hawk! Bewildered by the appearance of the soldiers they had thought dead, the outlaw army fell into confusion. But there was no escape for them, for the fort on one side and the advancing soldiers on the other. At length, the hawk and his followers, seeing themselves in danger of being killed to the last man, threw away their guns, and the victory was won. While the outlaws were being herded inside the fort at the command of Major Wilson, Vest Badger ran toward the Lone Ranger, saying... Ranger, my husband, Matt. What's become of him? Where's he at? Is he killed? Steady, Silver. 
I'm sorry, I can't say. Ma, oh, Dale, you're back. Wait, there's Tano. Tano? With two men. Kimosami! Oh, oh, God, oh, 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 God, oh. oh Matt, oh. Matt, it's you, honey. Pa, you're wounded. Yeah. It ain't nothing much. It's just what them crooks done when me and Herb wouldn't uncouple a train like they told us. Why, they, they shot you? They shot me and knocked Herb out. Then the skunks let the cars loose and went on to Dover with the engine to get the rest of their parts. They seem to know how to handle an engine all right. You say they went after the men the Hawks sent to Dover? Uh -huh. By golly, that's right. They was going to pick them up, then come back here. Major. Yes? This man has information that more of the Hawks' men are coming here. They can only be a handful. They'll come by train thinking their friends have captured the fort. You can be prepared for them, and you'll have the last of the worst gang of killers this country has ever known. Thanks to you, stranger. But what I don't see is how you got us here alive. Dale deserves the credit for that. And he can tell you about it better than I can. Dale? Son, did you have a hand in saving a soldier? I just done what the masked man told me. Yeah? We went up the tracks with another engine until we caught sight of the cars heading to town. Go on. Well, when we seen him, we stopped and started backing up just as fast as we could. We was only going about four or five miles slower than the cars was and in the same direction. So when they hit us, the bump didn't amount to much. Oh, son. Well, after that, there wasn't anything to it. We just slowed down as easy as we could and the cars slowed down with us. Then we hooked on proper and brought the soldiers into town. And saved both us and the fort. Son, you're a railroad man by thunder. And I'm here to say you're a better one than your pa. Hey, We're heading for Boonville. There's justice to be done. Hail Silver, how are you? The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>